Hello, this is your Uncle Terry, you see, and you are listening to the Roller Coaster Wide of a podcast, The Sirens of Audio. G'day audiophiles, you are listening or watching The Sirens of Audio, the podcast that explores the universe of Doctor Who in the audio medium. My name is Dwayne and with me is... It's Philip. G'day Dwayne and good day audiophiles. Good to have you with us. Uh, this is a, a bit of a landmark uh, occasion. It's been one year and two days since the first regular episode of The Sirens of Audio. Uh, went up. I did a little pilot uh, that went out on the 1st of February 2020, but uh, the 1st of March 2020 was uh, the episode two, and that was uh, my chat with Stephen Wyatt. So if you haven't heard that yet, go back and have a listen to that. And this was uh, a few months before you came along, Philip. It was. I probably discovered the podcast. It was probably mid-April, early May. I'm not quite sure how I found it, to be honest, now I think about it. But certainly the first episode I listened to was your Caldor City podcast, because I'm a huge fan of Caldor City, and I went, oh, this man has some interesting things to say. Then I went back and listened to some of the other ones, and the Nick Briggs interview was really excellent. And uh, yeah, and then maybe to my uh, <laughs> eternal damnation, I sent you a couple of messages, and you were foolish, enough to, you were foolish enough to say... Oh, why didn't you join me? And you haven't that said was, get lost yet. That was your mistake. You actually sent me an an audio review of something. I can't even remember what it was now. Actually, I might see if I can find that review because I've never played it on the show. Let me insert it right here. Neverland came at the end of probably one of the best seasons of Big Finish ever. The entire second series of Charlie and Eighth Doctor stories were amazing. They had so many links and they kept building on each other and Neverland finally wrapped up everything in a really positive way. Finally getting to meet the grace that was brilliantly played by a great actor and seeing Charlie work with Romana was just wonderful and sensational. The cast were amazing. The story is chilling and it's always full of surprises. What Neverland really was is a, a great surprise at the end and then the cliffhanger is amazing. I guess the heart of the whole program, though, is Charlie and her love for the Doctor, which not something that had been done before, but works really powerfully in this story. So that's what got me um, looking for you to join me as a co-host, because I'd had a couple lined up and they they dropped out. So uh, because we're quite a niche little podcast, this one, dealing only with mainly Big Finish, but audio in general, um, it's it's something that uh, perhaps people who listen to lots of audio are, are busy listening to the audio um, rather than listening to podcasts about the audio. Um, whereas the uh, podcasts for the TV show, they're a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. But some of them are quite good, and we've appeared on a couple of them. Recently, you appeared on the Runcible Report, Philip. That was cool. It was a lot of fun, too. You were talking about Big Finish Companions. I recently appeared on the same podcast, Runcible Report, um, talking about the music of the television show. So that was nice to get out of uh, audio and get and talk about the TV series for a change. That was nice. Yeah, because I mean, the fact is we love the TV series too. I mean, that's what drew us originally to Big Finish. So it's not that we don't like the TV show. We love the show and both of us know all sorts of inane and useless facts about that as well. Oh, tell me about it. Tell me about it. Uh, but today is our special segment, which we have termed We've Got Randomoids. So that's uh, that's the name of our segment. We've got randomoids. We've done our random selection. We did that only in the last episode. So we weren't exactly sure when that was going out when we recorded, but it's going out straight away. So we're going to do another random selection at the end of this show, but we have two random picks from the Big Finish Randomoid Selectatron. If you just do a Google search for Randomoid Selectatron, you will find that website where you can do it yourself. If you want to find a Big Finish uh, website random release, you can do that. Uh, just 
as I said, Google it. The first one that we're going to talk about is a short trip, short trip number 6.2, prime winner. Big Finish presents Doctor Who, short trips, prime winner. I didn't mean it, but sometimes it's not easy to... Th that is, I'm not a silly teenager anymore, you know? At least I don't think I am. Oh, it's so difficult to tell living in a time machine, but I certainly don't feel like one. Except when you treat me like one, that is. And you haven't even mentioned my... Don't forget it. She suddenly realized that she was on the verge of tears. Now she felt completely ridiculous and unable to look the doctor in the eye. Suddenly one of the doors hissed open behind them, and the sound of chatter and footsteps floated in from beyond. I'm sorry, Doctor, she said quietly. I shouldn't have said any of that. It's just that I... I bruised my shoulder and it really hurts. I mean, it's not broken or anything, but... Howard? Perry stood up and called the name again. The tall, handsome man she was looking at, who was surely her stepfather, had come in through one door and was now disappearing among a crowd through another. Doctor, did you see him? It was Howard! Big finish. We love stories. By Nigel Fares. That's a sixth Doctor and Perry story, so it's narrated by Perry. What, what's your impression of the short trips range, Philip? Well, I have found them hit and miss along the way. So there's... Did you? Yeah, I did. So early, early on, um, before they were... Because when they first started, they weren't actually being narrated by original cast members. And so yeah. I only tended to listen to the odd one or two then. Uh, and I found some of the stories were great. I found some of them were okayish, ish um, And I wasn't quite de decided whether or not I thought they were canon. That's a whole other debate, of course. And so, yeah, so I, I didn't get into them. But then along the way, they've had some amazing one-offs. And I think that started getting me in. So I subscribed to a couple of seasons. Um, yeah, at the moment, I'm listening to them all. Once again, I, I there's ones I really love. The ones that are the character being the character, which are a bit more like the Companion Chronicles, which I love, are the ones that I really love. Um, there's others which are just, you know, almost like reading a book. And providing I can, you know, speed up to 1.5, 1.75, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Very good, because Short Trips wasn't a range that Big Finish came up with. It was actually pre-Big Finish. It was done by BBC Audio, wasn't it? I was digging around in my shed recently and I came across some old cassettes of short trips that I had that I've still got locked away out there so it's not uh, an original big finish finish thing so um so that's very interesting and and yes uh, several years ago big finish went and started making them monthly download only uh, 12 releases a year and because of the the cost of subscribing to that it was a really easy one to subscribe to because it wasn't that expensive. And to be honest, I can't say I've listened to every single one of them, but I just got the subscription because I'd get one drop in. If I listened to it, you know, I'd uh, I'd give it a crack. And particularly in the more recent years, they've been really, really interesting. Uh, and it's a good platform for new writers. That's what I've discovered. New writers that have come along, I've noticed that they've uh, had, a, had a short trips uh, entry and then they've gone on to do other things for Big Finish. So it's like a testing ground, which is why, for me, it's a little bit disappointing that they've slowed down the short trips this year. They're not releasing them monthly. They're going to release a box set of half a dozen in September, around September. But I always found that it was... Uh, I, I enjoyed the short trips for the fact that there was a opportunity to hear what new writers had to, had to say. But this one that the Randomoid Selectatron has picked for us is not a new writer at all he is a well-established writer for big finish and many other ranges he was he even wrote and starred in uh, bbv productions before big finish came along in the couple of years beforehand so nigel fares is uh, a very very competent writer uh should we have a look at the blurb the blurb says the tardis makes a forced landing in a lavish room looking very much like a foyer to a 1930s casino. But the games being played in the halls are unlike anything they would find on Earth, and the players are far from human. And then Perry sees her stepfather. So I think that is what drags you into this short trip, because Howard was a quite a charismatic, charismatic 
character from Planet of Fire. So I was instantly drawn to, oh, what are we going to learn about Howard from this story? Um, however, as you get into the story, <laughs> you realize that uh, you're not going to learn as much about Howard as you thought. Um, so in a way, for me, that was a little disappointing, but it didn't take away from the story. So it's narrated by Nicola Bryant. Uh, which I've got plenty to say about her and her performance in this story, uh, directed by Lisa Bauman, who is the most competent director uh, when it comes to big finish productions, and she's yeah, she's she's right up there as one of the top directors, I would say. Uh, music by Steve Foxen, very reliable. Uh, script edited by John Ainsworth, so he was uh, involved with that as well. Um, one of the long-termers when it comes to big finish. Um, so... Give me your thoughts on the story, Philip. What did you think of uh, Prime Winner? Okay, well, unlike you, I don't read blurbs before I listen to stories. So I had no idea that uh, <laughs> there was going to be any connection with um, Perry's past and her stepfather was going to be there. So for me, when I was listening to it and he was suddenly there, it was actually a nice surprise. So I guess it was less of a uh, surprise for that. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it was interesting. It was an interesting bit of a timey-wimey sort of story, and I don't know how much we do or don't want to give spoilers away. Um, this was actually one I had to, I actually had to go and buy this. I had to go into the Big Finish website and buy this one because I didn't have it in my collection. So I've obviously never heard it before. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a bit of a timey-wimey thing. Um, it was reminding me a bit of Megloss uh, and the chronic hysteresis scenes with the Doctor and Romana because there's you know, a lot of replaying scenes, replaying scenes. And so it kept me intrigued all along the way because I wasn't quite sure what was happening. Um, I did actually about halfway through go and look to see who the... Oh, actually, no, I, may have, I may have known who the author was. I'm not sure. But I certainly checked halfway through and saw it was Nigel Fares because the whole thing was being so competently handled. I was thinking, this must be yeah, a, a name. Um, and, Someone and established. Nigel, yeah. somebody sta- it just it felt, it felt strong. So it, it, it very much had Perry's voice. Um, and Nigel Fares has a, a real great ability to capture voices. He writes particularly well for Louise Jamison. Uh, who are both friends. I've actually met... Nigel and I have been to the theatre together. Um, actually, last time I was in the UK, um, we both went to see Louise Jamison performing as Miss Marple in A Murder's Announced. And so um, Louise had organised our tickets, so we you know, caught up at the bar and had some champagne beforehand, saw the performance, and then we went out afterwards. So, yeah, Nigel really understands voices, character voices well. Um, he's always got Leela's voice particularly well. He did a number of Companion Chronicles for her. He's done some of the main range. And it was interesting he him write for Perry here because he just captured her voice so well. Um, and it, it was interesting because he, he went for... I think the thing that slightly grated me, but I appreciate, was it was very early on in the Sixth Doctor Perry's relationship. Yes. And so per- it's very much the... You're, taking all my, you're stealing all my notes, Phil. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, you took all my notes at the beginning. So <laughs> there you go. Um it's very much the whingy, whiny Perry. But yeah. but he he really captures it well, but he still gives her heart. I think sometimes a TV show, when they made Perry whingy and whiny, uh, just made it a bit naggy. He still managed to keep a bit of fun and love in her voice, even though she was still being a bit whingy, whiny. So I, I think that was good to see. It was, it's almost like you started the transition of the, the Perry, who was going to be different for her, the second season with Colin Baker. Um, yeah. Yeah, so initial, that's some of my initial thoughts. What, what do you want to say? What haven't okay. I said to spoil for you? Uh, no, no, no. When you were saying it was timey-wimey, that's one of my dot points in my notes. So I agree with you there. Um, I, I love the, the, the characterization of the Sixth Doctor and Perry in the early argumentative phase. And what the short trips did was it allowed the actors to take on... It, it shows This shows Nicola Bryant at her best and how good she is at, at uh, acting. She's, she does a brilliant job in capturing that era, which even when she recorded this was such a long time ago. She does her narration voice. She does the Six Doctors voice, uh, Perry's voice, all in total character. And uh, it takes you, it, it, despite it being a short trip, uh, an audio book style reading, it takes you right back. Um, uh, so I, I think it's, it really is a, is a, uh, a standout for, Nicola Bryant as an actor. And I was just going to say that the ending scenes of this, it it really shows that relationship that was argumentative in season 22 on television between the Sixth Doctor and Perry. It begins to show that softening 
towards the end of this story. So Nigel Fares has captured that. Uh, he was probably intentionally wanting to make start that softening phase that we got to see in the early part of Trial of a Time Lord. Um, but it wasn't sort of overtly doing it. So he was he was showing it, not telling it, even though it's an audio book. How do you do how do you show and not tell in an audio book? Well, that's a combination of the good writing plus the magnificent acting of Nicola Bryant. And uh, also I've got a note there saying there's a I love the ending uh, with the reference to Commander Maxwell. Um, so that was that was a nice uh, fanny kind of moment to have in there well. But overall, I think Prime Win is a, a great short trip to listen to, and I heartily recommend it. Yeah, definitely. I guess I say, in terms of um, music sound design, I was reflecting on the way through that I didn't really notice it. And I think that's actually a sign to a really good sound design. That mm. It was still giving atmosphere, but it didn't pervade. It, it allowed the story to keep on top of everything. So, yeah. Excellent. All up. You're Excellent. right. It's, yeah, excellent. You're right. It's a <laughs> great story. Fantastic. All right. Here's my notes for that one. They're out of there. All right. I've actually written notes. Can you believe it? It's not something I generally do, but I have for this. So I must be taking it semi-seriously. It's good. So our second Randomoid Selectatron release that was picked for us by the mysteries of the internet age uh, was Dalek Empire 3.4. The Demons, written by Nicholas Briggs. It's the 12th overall story in the Dalek Empire set. Let's go! David Tennant. They came screaming out of the skies, gunning down anyone who wasn't fast enough to get out of the way. Gareth Thomas. I am Susan Mendes. Sarah Mowat. I wanted to know the truth. Dalek Empire. Susan Mendes! Three exciting miniseries. The essentials are that we work for the Galactic Union and we were here to find out about the Daleks. Available now. So it's in the middle of an of an overarching series, Philip. How did you go with that? Well, I thought I was going to have to listen to the episodes beforehand, but I just ran out of time. So in the end, I mean, I, I mean, I've listened to this a number of times in the past. But this is probably my third or fourth time, probably fourth time I've listened to this episode. So I just dived in, and I was a bit confused at first, but I managed to work it out eventually. That's why so, you go to TARDIS Wiki. You go to TARDIS Wiki and look at the summaries. Oh, I don't do those other things. It's like reading, <laughs> it's, it's like reading the blurbs. I just don't do that. I'd rather dive in and let the story take me. Um, so, yeah. Are we, we going to say more about the uh, background to this story? Yeah, so the Dalek Empire 3 is an interesting series because the, the kind of Dalek Empire that most of us uh, know and love was kind of wrapped up at the end of series two dalek war because we have two factions of daleks one faction of daleks coming from an alternate reality coming in and having like a civil type it's not really a civil war because they're different daleks but warring with our universe's daleks so dalek empire 2 sort of deals with that and dalek empire 3 has elements from that universe but many of the characters in dalek empire 3 are brand new characters some of them are brought in to Dalek Empire 3, particularly Susan Mendes, who had a major role in the first Dalek Empire series. She's like a different character in Dalek Empire 3. Um, and it sort of revolves around uh, a, a place called the Graxus system, where the Graxus Wardens... I, I couldn't help but think that the Graxus Wardens are like intergalactic park rangers, you know? So that, that that's kind of what they're like. Um, and... Yes, the, the Dalek tropes are used here where on the outer fringes of the Graxa system, Dalek plagues are starting to come in and be used. And um, there's a guy who was uh, brought through, probably <laughs> one of the most irritating characters for me from Dalek Empire 2. Is it Cy Tarkov? Is that his name? Yep. Um, I found him very irritating to listen to at the time. But in this episode, I, it's just it's just his voice grated on me. I mean, it does, doesn't take away from the story at all. Uh, but I think Nick Briggs was <clears throat> really enjoying his sound design here and uh, in, enjoying the uh, space helmet breathing, heavy breathing for long periods of time, which thankfully was not used in this episode that I listened to, but in the early Dalek Empire 3s, it was listened to a lot. Um, so, yeah, the, the Graxus Wardens are, are trying to work out how to, how to uh, uh, deal with the Daleks even though they've introduced this plague and now they're coming along saying they're going to eradicate the plague. Um, 
But the demons is interesting because we've had some characters introduced earlier in Dalek Empire 3, played by David Tennant and one other, which I don't have on my notes, um, who it turns out in, in this particular episode, episode four of Dalek Empire 3, that they are codenamed the demons, uh, which are sort of an advanced form of Robomen created by the alternate universe Daleks in Dalek War. So this story kind of is starting to provide that backstory. And we get David Tennant in there. So David Tennant fans are going to love this. Um, he uses his non-Scottish accent. He's used all different types of accents in his Big Finish. But in this one, he's using the same accent that he uses as the Doctor a couple of years later. Because this would have been recorded about 2003, I reckon. Yes. So, so it, was released, years. it was released August 2004. So yeah, it was, mm. re- it was recorded the year before. So it was, yeah, it's long before, yeah. long before he's going to be Doctor. Um, yeah, I thought because by this stage he'd already played that mean Nazi in Coditz, so he'd been, been mm-hmm. a Nazi before now. Um, and during this time, he's also about this time playing the Colonel in the Unit side series that they started to write. Um, so he was in the Brimacom uh, Wood, yeah. yes. Um, so he's already done the Unbound, though I think the Unbound got released halfway through these being released. Yeah, um, and they've got to go back to Unit, and then later on he's going to play medicinal purposes, and then it's not going to return for eleven years. Then he's the 10th Doctor. So I know he, um, wow. when David Tennant knew Nick Briggs was doing this and really wanted to do it, and I, I, I know he, um, he said to um, Nick Briggs, oh, I can lose the scotch. Because um, the, the one thing that Nick Briggs was concerned about was the, uh, the, the Scottish accent at that stage because of other, other, other concerns. And you're right, it would end up being the, uh, the Doctor's voice later on. What were the concerns with, this, with the Scotch accent? Um, I think there was already they'd already been a north they'd been a main character who'd been north for the first two seasons. Um, That's right. Yeah. So Mark I, I, Mark somebody wasn't it? Yes. Can't remember his name off yeah. the top of my head. No. Um, can, I say, can I say a couple more things? I'm sure you've got more notes. Go for it. Go for it. Things. So it's um I mean it's certainly Nick Briggs's passion. So at this stage he's not yet executive producer of Big Finish. So this is his baby. And he, not only did he write it, he directed it, he did the music and the sound design. So this is Nick Briggs having control. Um, it's interesting that um, when you interviewed him, you, you comment on the fact that one of his tra- traits in terms of writing is he jumps around backwards and forwards in time. And he kind mm. of den- denied that and said, oh, no, I'm not like that at all. Whereas this episode, just once again, just is the pinnacle of <laughs> Nicholas Briggs in terms of it's just non-linear. Just it's, listen to Creatures of Beauty. Yeah, Chris, you know, and there's and there's several <laughs> others. I mean, his, his latest masterpiece, the um, New Frontier. He 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 doesn't. He, he can tell stories linear. And he tells great stories linear, but he also tells stories that are totally mucked up. And even Sirens of Time, the very first one he wrote for Big Finish, is still not really linear because you, you're dealing with these you know, each Doctor's telling one story at a time, and then they all bounce together at the end. So mm. uh, yeah, I think I think your comment to him that he doesn't. Yeah, one of his traits is being non-linear, which he objected to <laughs> when you re- yeah, listen to something like this you go oh yeah this is so nick briggs it's he- it's not it's not something that he always does maybe that's what he was no. trying to say he's not always writing like that but it's something that for me personally when i think of his storytelling well okay well it's likely that i could get a story that's going to jump all over the place like he does great action stories too but this is what i remember him for this kind of thing and this is great and this is great action too but it's just not linear, and and he's constantly going backwards and filling in information that you haven't had. So it, it makes you know, yeah. So it's it's it makes it want to listen to it more than once, because when you've got the full picture at the end, you need to go back and listen to it again to see how you got there again. And so it's, it's this constant constant filling in, um, yeah. Which I said, I, I love the storytelling. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Often you hear listen to writers talk about their work. You sometimes think, I'm not sure they do actually understand <laughs> all they've got. Um, I was, yeah, I was reading a biography of another writer recently, and just he was t- saying he wasn't funny. I'm thinking, I can think of 10 instances where I've laughed out loud with his work. But anyhow, <laughs> um, William Gaunt's in this, which is you know, a big, once again, a big got, get. Um, and this is his only big finished work, you know, famous for playing... Yeah. Uh, yep. Rev- Revelation of the Daleks and playing a similar sort of character as he did in Revelation of the Daleks um, and of course there's some and his people. voice is just magnificent to listen to on audio yeah, yeah. yeah. there's some beautiful voices um, Steve Elder so Cy Tarkov you were talking about um, mm. I was listening to him because the voice trying to work out I knew the voice 
And so I actually then went back afterwards and listed his credits because he was Pharaoh in Jubilee. And yes. so that's why I was trying to work out how I knew his voice, which is uh, a slimy character back then. So I guess... I, I mentioned that on our review of Jubilee too, that I knew his voice. <laughs> Reminded yeah. me straight back to this. <laughs> it stands out, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think there's some great, great, yeah, some great things happening in this. Um, yeah. Well, are you got any more on your notes? Yeah, just on apart from Nick's storytelling, his sound design is quite unique in Dalek Empire as well. So his sound design and music, because he does he does the music too. I I, I should have spoken to him more about the music side of things because that really interests me. Next time, and, uh, and how he goes about creating music because um, uh, Dalek Emp- the, the all the music from the Dalek Empire is great, and I think the theme from Dalek Empire 3 was my favourite out of the four seasons of Dalek Empire. Love it. And I, I really enjoy all the music that uh, that Nick Briggs produces. Um, yeah, he likes... He likes I, was just, I, was just, I was just going to say, in terms of... Cause I just talked about Steve Foxton and the music and the sound design is unassuming. In this play, the sound design and music becomes part of the characters. Mm. And so it's it's more melodrama and there's some very imposing music and sounds that happen in dr- dramatic moments um, which help create the shock value help create the tension so where it's interesting the contrast I, I talked about you know the sound design being strong when you don't notice it in this case the music does protrude but it's supposed to and so yeah it's a total opposite was for the last story because in this one bangs crashes um, discords happening throughout the whole piece of music, um, riffs yeah. coming up backwards and forwards, um, you know, little leaf motives for the characters. But, you know, it, it helps drive the story along too and also helps us know where we are because when you have so many characters, because this play is full of so many mm. characters, but you need to know how they filmed it because they obviously filmed different characters in different scenes. They, they couldn't have it the whole casting because the cast is probably one of the biggest casts I've seen lists. lists. Um Part of the clues to help you know which character is involved in speaking is he uses the music to do that. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, absolutely. I interrupted you. That's okay. Um, so sound design's great. Also, what's great about Dalek Empire is that I'm not. I'm. I've said this many times before, but I am not a huge fan of the Daleks. And Dalek Empire is a. I really love Dalek Empire because of the absence of the doctor when the doctor's not there the daleks are a little bit more low a little bit less predictable you don't know what's going to happen with the dalek doctor who you know that the daleks are always going to lose ultimately in the end but in this we don't know exactly what's going to happen and it's that level of uncertainty that makes the daleks in dalek empire a lot more enjoyable to me so uh uh i like it i like it a lot yeah and it's I haven't heard the whole series for many years, but it didn't quite grab me like series one and two. But still, for the fact that David Tennant's there, William Gaunt's there, great voices to listen to, uh, and quite an epic, quite an epic scale story, this one. So, uh, yeah, I can recommend Dalek Empire 3 as well. Yeah, it was, it was great to have these two stories thrown at us because they're, they're not things I would have gone and listened to necessarily. I mean, I, I would have got back to Dalek Empire someday, maybe. Um, but yeah, good to be forced to, to go back and listen to some, some good stuff. Speaking of being forced to listen to some stuff, let's choose our next two stories on We've Got Randomoids. So let's go to the uh, Randomoid Selectatron over here and select a random big finish release. Da, 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 da. And it's a book. No. <laughs> Oh, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> it's a book. No? It's a short trip. Another short trip. So this is short trips. 6.1. Oh, just before the one we just did. Yeah. Gardens of the Dead. It's a Fifth Doctor story written by Jenny T. Colgan. Oh, Colgan, sorry. Oh, good. And who is... Ah, oh, it's narrated by Mark Strickson. That'll be interesting. That'll Ooh, be interesting. Because he doesn't do a great deal... Uh, Sort of as opposed to the other uh, actors. So let's select another. So that's 6.1, short trip 6.1. Let's go for the second one. 
Ooh, you're gonna like this. This one is Torchwood, One Rule. So that's the Tracy Overman one, written by Joe Litster. Brilliant. I think that's the very first Torchwood uh, featuring Tracy Ann Overman, isn't it? I think it is. On audio? Yep. So, um, yeah, I did get that one. I went off Torchwood. It's in the monthly range. Yeah, it's number four, so I would definitely have got that at the time. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it's been a long time since I listened to that. So, um, yeah, that's great. Short Trip 6.1. What was the name of that one again? Can't remember. I'll have to go back and listen to the recording. And Short uh, Torchwood uh, monthly release for One Rule, starring Great. Tracy Ann Overman. We're going to listen to those for our next. Uh, we've got Randomoids. So there you go. That was our. Uh, I wonder if we kept under 30 minutes. We'll see how we go with that. But I've uh, got a couple of. Uh, recommendations for this episode and um i think philip i think it might be your turn turn. it might be my turn there you go um i'm going to recommend a podcast i've been listening to all of time and space so it's a great podcast if you say so Uh, i'm saying so too um it's looking at uh each show one at a time starting from the beginning so i've been listening to yeah each episode, hear what they have to say about each story. So we've just got through the first season of William Hartnell. Um, on the whole, I'm enjoying their discussion. There's some very funny things that some of them say. Um, sometimes, they, you know, I, I'm, I like being positive and sometimes they have a bit of a negative, they get a bit negative for me. But on the whole, the good arguments, good balance and uh, some good points to make. Yeah, excellent. They've got some great guests uh, on on there, they've had um, Nicholas Pegg doing uh, the Daleks with them, so that was awesome to get his a Dalek himself doing uh, an episode of uh, reviewing the Daleks. Um, and uh, they usually pick some guests uh, from other fellow podcasts. Um, and um, in season two, they've got me coming up. Oh, really? So, well, I, there you I go. What, we'll have to um, we'll have to see how that goes. Um, their release schedules uh, goes quite a lightning pace. So um, we recorded this a mere six or seven months ago. <laughs> so, we'll see, so we'll see what it sounds like when it comes out in a couple of months because they're doing one a month. All right. So for me, now you wouldn't have heard this, Philip. I started the episode with an ident from a good friend of ours called Uncle Terry. So you wouldn't have heard that yet because I haven't put it in. It's post-production. It's the magic of audio. But I'm going to play for you now the entire... Um, recording that was done for me by a friend of the podcast, Hayden Gribble. So have a listen to this, Philip. Hiya, Dwayne. Right, this is Hayden here. Sorry this has taken so long, um, but here we go. Okay, let me just get... Terence, do you want to come to the... Yes, I think we will, actually, yes. Is this the thing we're getting paid for? No, unfortunately, it isn't, Terence. Oh, well, that, that's a massive shame, are you see, because, uh, because money is scarce at the uh, best of times, but, uh, but now it's even worse, isn't it? Just just do the line, Terence. OK, OK, so uh, let me get my specs on. Let's have a little look here. Mm, OK, this is for Dwayne. Hello, this is your Uncle Terry, you see, and you're listening to the roller coaster wide of a podcast, The Sirens of Audio. And just once more for good luck, Terence. Oh, okay, if you must, okay. Hello, this is your Uncle Terry, you see, and you are listening to the roller coaster wide of a podcast, The Sirens of Audio. Perfect. Thank you, Terence. Thank you, Hayden. Love you. Love you too. There you go. So, How lovely was that? <laughs> that was um <laughs> That was a friend of the podcast, Hayden, from the Diddly Dumb podcast. And that is my recommendation for this time. We're both doing podcasts. Isn't that weird how we do the same things? Um, so I'm going to recommend the latest uh, edition of the Diddly Dumb podcast, which came out. They were talking about the uh, 11th Doctor series. They made some really interesting comments on Stephen's Stephen Moffat's version of fem- feminism and how he writes for females, which is really interesting. I find really interesting because I love Matt Smith. I love the Matt Smith era, but I find Amy Pond one of the most irritating characters. I think she's my least favorite companion ever in the history of Doctor Who. She is just such a horrible, like like Rose can be horrible, but Amy is the single most horrible, selfish person I've ever 
uh, seen board that TARDIS. So I don't think she has any right being there. However, she was very cute when she was waiting <laughs> so for the doctor. <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, they don't say that on Diddly Dumb, but I'm just expressing my little view there. Uh, so the, go and check view, out the that latest episode. Not necessarily the views of the whole podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not. Probably not. But the more I think about uh, Amy, the more I dislike her, which is why I'm really looking forward to the, the Lone Centurion coming out. I want to see Rory on his own, even though he's pining after someone he shouldn't be pining over because she doesn't deserve him. Um, I am really looking forward to uh, the Lone Centurion. So, uh, so yeah, my recommendation, check out the Diddly Dumb podcast. Their episode's called Elevenses, I think it is. And uh, they're talking about the whole Matt Smith era. Sounds great. So uh, there you go. That's that's us. We're done. We're done and dusted. Next week, we've got uh, part one of a three-part series coming up, which we won't be doing over consecutive weeks. We're going to be splitting it up over the next month or two. Uh, we're going to be having our first part of an interview we did recently with Gary Russell. So with the end of the monthly range coming uh, this month, it's going to be fantastic to get Gary's thoughts of those early years of Big Finish and some of the other things that he was doing in the universe of Doctor Who. He's amazing. He's done heaps of things. And I hate him. <laughs> I was going to say, everything <laughs> you want to know about how Big Finish started, where the ideas came from, um, you're going to hear it all with Gary's t- three talks. So he was he was very generous with his time. Um, mm. You know, we were just keen to you know try and grab him for half an hour, and we got a lot more than that. But you're going to find out the beginnings of Big Finish. You're going to find out all kinds of information about casting and and all the, the roles that he did. Because certainly when Big Finish started, it was really just him, um, you know, and Jason Hagelery from the Bills. But just hearing his creative thoughts, hearing um, yeah, just where it started from, and you know, so many classics are coming from that early era. You know, you talk, ask people about Big Finish. Um, the first five shows they usually name are going to be in, in that time when Gary was usually directing them all, and certainly having a major input in terms of um, the scripts, um, hiring people, um, finding new writers. Yeah, it, it's and, and listening to his memories, listen, listening to his stories, they are going to be enthralling. You're going to learn stuff you never knew because I learned so much. So all that's coming up next on the Sirens of Audio. We'll catch you then. Doodle. Bye. You have been listening to the Sirens of Audio. We've got Randomoids 1 with Philip Edney and Dwayne Bunny. Theme music by Husky by the Geek. You'll find his video of the theme on his YouTube channel. Rate, review, subscribe and love us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Send your emails to sirensofaudio at gmail.com and our website is at sirensofaudio.com. Our Twitter handle is at Audio Sirens and you can find us on Facebook by searching for the Sirens of Audio. And if you too want to attend to your piles and piles of CDs that now litter your floor because your bookcase was filled back in 2009, keep listening to lots of wonderful audio drama because audio drama... Raw!